So I'm two months into my cut and I'm making really quick progress. People always ask if I have any secrets that help me and well, I do, but I might get some people a little angry with me because these aren't exactly the pillars of the perfect healthy human. But in small doses, these things can really, really help. So here's my top five secrets to getting lean fast. Okay, let's just pause for one second. Before I get into this first secret, I just wanna warn that if you have any history of eating disorders or anything like that, if any of these tips are triggering, please do not try them. I'm just sharing transparently like I always do about what I'm doing at this very moment that's helping me, but if this is gonna detriment you, it's gonna hurt you, please do not do it. Also, I do really wanna mention that if you're tired of spinning your wheels and wasting time or even wasting muscle when you're dieting, you just feel like you don't know what you're doing, just hit me up. This is what I do for a living. I'm literally an expert at it. Done it for 15 years now. I've helped hundreds of people just in this past year. Send me a DM on my Instagram, Brian Turner Official. We can chat. Now let's get into number one, baby butt. So number one, increase your caffeine intake. Now I know a lot of people might be thinking that doesn't sound like the healthiest thing ever, but if you keep your caffeine within a healthy range, I'm not saying you have a thousand milligrams. I literally had one friend who was taking 1.5 grams that is over 25 cups of coffee a day I, I don't know it's crazy but if you have caffeine within a reasonable intake it can actually help you quite a bit so I'll share what I do but I also want to share about the actual science behind this so I found a study that showed that caffeine intake actually increased exercise performance by 12% think about that if you had a 12% better workout every day just for 10 days you're literally getting one free bonus workout of progress essentially every 10 days if you do that every 100 days, that's 10 extra days of performance. That adds up to quite a bit. So you're gonna have better and more effective workouts. I feel like that's already reason enough for me, but it also has an appetite suppression effect, which means you're not gonna snack and eat as many calories, which is really helpful if you tend to overeat, especially at night. But also it has really good effects on your metabolism. Take a look at this quote. Studies show that caffeine can increase resting metabolic rate by three to 11% with larger doses having a greater effect. Interestingly, most of the increase in metabolism is caused by an increase in fat burning. I mean, those two things are fantastic. You're gonna burn more calories and the calories that you're burning are generally going to be from fat stores. That's excellent. So I do wanna caution again, you don't wanna be taking absolute insane amounts of caffeine because you can have adrenal fatigue, which then is gonna do the opposite thing. You're gonna be super exhausted with or without caffeine and that's gonna be terrible workouts. So you do have to find like a correct range for you. So the caffeine intake routine that works best for me while I'm dieting is to take one serving of a pre-workout or maybe an energy drink before my workout. So that's somewhere around 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine. And then I will have a cup of coffee after the workout. And that's usually it. Sometimes I'll have another cup of coffee later in the day. So in total for me, that's about 200 to maybe 350 milligrams caffeine a day. So not an insane amount, but for me, I do find that it helps a lot. Then when I'm bulking, I reduce my intake just down to about one. 100 milligrams a day. Secret number two, diet sodas. All right, again, I know I can feel people cringing right now, especially people who are super centric on health. And I agree, diet sodas and artificial sweeteners are not great for you and they can cause issues. But when dieting for a short period of time, a month, two months, three months, maybe even four months, it is such a short period of time that I think it's an acceptable casualty. We do things all the time that aren't good for us. We stare at computer screens late at night. We expose ourselves to UV rays out in the sun. We have processed foods. We, you could list a bunch of things that aren't great for you, but we do it anyways. So for me, I don't think that diet sodas should be like this major pillar of your diet where you're having seven a day, but I think sometimes it can help. You know, if at night you tend to really have a sweet tooth and you've seen yourself over and over and over fail at staying under your calories and you're, you know, snacking and binging on, on desserts and, and screwing your diet up really using a diet soda to be able to fill that sweet tooth craving and that keeps you under your calories and succeeding that day I think that can be a really useful tool so for me especially when I'm towards the end of my my dieting phase you know on like month three of a three month cut and I'm getting a lot lower in calories I'm getting a lot leaner I will use a diet soda probably a couple times a week just to fill that sweet craving oh yeah I do also want to mention that if you want to be a little bit more natural you can use like stevia in your 
sweetened tea. That way you can still feel that sweet tooth or you can even get a stevia sweetened soda like Zevia's. Secret number three, hack your dopamine circuits. This one is so simple and if you're a glutton for punishment, then I think this one is going to really mesh with you. But basically give yourself a punishment or a reward. So if you successfully track your calories and macros the entire week without going over, then you get to go shopping this weekend or play video games or go on a date, whatever that reward is, reward yourself. And or on the other hand, if you do not hit, let's say all your workouts for the week, you don't get to watch TV or movies the next week, or you know, you have to visit your grandma and give her a sponge bath. Whatever the punishment is, give yourself a little something to keep yourself from, you know, just skipping out on workouts whenever you don't feel like it. Instead, at that moment, when you're like, eh, maybe I'll skip right now, you say, no, then I have to wash grandma's folds in her back. <sighs> Secret number four, eat your calories as late as you can in the day. Now this might sound like intermittent fasting, which is basically fasting all day and then eating all your calories in a single window at the end of the day. And that's not exactly what this is. There's really no benefit to this other than saving your calories for later so that when you are facing your hardest snacking and cravings at the end of the night, you have a lot more calories to dip into. My thought process with this is that during the day you are working or you're going to school or whatever, you're just really busy and you're also you know intaking caffeine and having an appetite suppressant effect so it's easier to deal with the hunger throughout the day and then when you're home and you're bored and those cravings are screaming in your ear because you're sitting there watching your favorite Netflix show or whatever then you have that extra 2,000 calories to dip into I've tried all manners of dieting and just you know partitioning my calories in different ways and when I eat a balanced you know all throughout the day eating the same amount of calories every couple hours I always end up really hungry and un satisfied before I go to bed. But if I just eat 10 to 20% of my calories throughout the morning and afternoon and then save 80% for right before bed, then I get to go to bed super full. My stomach is actually satiated. I feel great and it all ends up being the same results. So it does not matter when you're eating your calories as long as the end of the day, they're all adding up to the same amount of calories and macros. Now I've got one last one, but I've also got a bonus after this. So stick around. Number five, protein powder and high volume food foods. Now I know a lot of people will harp on about how you can get everything you need from whole foods and I agree you totally can do that but if you rely on protein powders it allows you to have a lot more of a variety and a choice of what you want to eat throughout the day instead of having to only think about foods that have tons of protein. So this allows you to have something that is almost entirely carbs just because it tastes great it's what you actually want right now. Let's say for example you just want a giant salad or you want popcorn. Not a lot of protein in it. But if you have a scoop of protein powder along with it, boom, now you just turn that meal into a high protein meal. I'm not opposed, especially while dieting, to getting two or three or maybe even four servings of protein from protein powder. Yes, this is not ideal and no, you're not going to do it every single day. But sometimes that day you just want to eat certain things and I don't think you should be punishing yourself just for having protein powder a lot on a single day out of every week or two or whatever. And if you're like me and you tend to like snacking or you just like to eat things that give you a lot of mouthfuls, like give you a lot of bites, right? Then this allows you also to rely on high volume, low calorie foods. So this is, you know, veggie stir fries made with soy sauce or like big salads made with a low fat vinaigrette or popping popcorn without any fat in it. You can get foods that have a lot of volume with low calories and then just pair that with a scoop of protein powder and boom, you get to eat so much food for just a couple hundred calories and still hit your protein macros. Now what protein powder you use is totally up to you but of course if you want to support me and use the same one that I use you can get Vivo Life. I'll put a link to it in the description below but finally I want to talk about the bonus and kids close your ears because this one's good. If you have a willing participant, a partner, use relations with that person to your advantage. If you have the ability to do it every single night, this adds a bunch of extra cardio, right? It also is really great for that relationship because if you just guarantee that you're going to do it every single night, even when you're tired, it's kind of like your cardio. You get to the end of the night, you're really tired and you say, but I have to do it every single night. And then boom, everyone's happy. <laughs> 
you're happy, <laughs> you're releasing a bunch of hormones, but you're also burning a bunch of extra calories. It's fan-freaking-tastic. All right, so a super simple video today, but I really wanna drop these secrets because these are not things that people usually talk about. People shy away from these types of secrets. Next weekend, I will be doing a full day of eating, but exactly what I eat and exactly what you can copy so that you can lose fat as easily as possible and also just take all the hard work out of it. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Subscribe if you're not subscribed for more high quality content like this, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next video. Peace.